Now for this last part, what we've got to do is find out the speed that C goes after B collides with C. And you'll notice I've updated the diagram. We found out in the previous part that after A and B collided, B was moving with a speed of 5, 6 U. And so we've got C is originally at rest. And then after the impact between B and C, I've labeled them as the final velocity VB and the final velocity of C as VC. So we've got to find out VC and we've got the coefficient of restitution between B and C is two thirds. So to do a problem like this, we've got to look at the conservation again of linear momentum and Newton's law of impact and solve our simultaneous equations for VC. So looking first then at the conservation of linear momentum. Okay, we'll just put that in there. We need to take a positive direction, I'm going to take it to the right. And we've got the momentum before impact equals the momentum after impact. So the momentum before impact is just going to be that of B because C is at rest. So we've got the mass of B, which is M, times its velocity, which is 5 sixths U. OK, so we've got that and it equals the momentum after impact. So the momentum of B is going to be M times VB and we add that to the momentum of C, which is M times VC. We've got M in each term, so we could divide that out and we end up with 5 sixths U equals VB plus VC. So that's one equation and we now need to get another equation and that's coming then from Newton's law of restitution. So we'll just put that up there as a subtitle, Newton's law of restitution. We talked about this in the first part, so uh, we should be familiar with this now, that E, the coefficient of restitution, is the relative speed after impact compared with the relative speed before impact. And the relative speed after impact is going to be VC minus VB. They're going in the same direction and VC is greater than VB. And we compare that to the relative speed before impact. Well, C is stationary, so it's just going to be 5, 6, U. Let's put that in there, 5, 6, U. So knowing that E is 2 thirds, and if we now multiply 5, 6, U with E of 2 thirds, you're going to get 10, 18. So it follows that 10 over 18 times u equals vc minus vb. Okay, so 5, 6 u times the value for e gives us the 10 eighteenths. This cancels in fact the 10 eighteenths. You can divide top and bottom here by 2 giving us 5 over 9. So let's just write that back in that we've got 5 ninths u equals vc minus vb. And we'll call that equation now we've just got to find out VC so we could in fact add these two equations together because that will cancel out that VB in there. So I'm going to add those two equations together. 1 plus 2 it gives us, or well, we end up with 5 6 U plus 5 ninths U, let's just write that in, 5 6 U plus 5 ninths U equals, well, we've got VC plus another VC, so that's 2VC, and as I said earlier, VB added to minus VB, well, that cancels to zero. So we've just got 5,6U plus 5 ninths u What's that going to be? Well, it turns out to be 25 eighteenths. 25 eighteenths u equals 2VC. So to get VC, all I need to do is divide both sides by 2. So we get 25 over 2 18s, which is 36. 25 36 U for 
the speed of C then after collision with B. Okay, so there you go. Hope uh, that uh, makes some sense.